Hey, Pups Nerdy Corgi here. I know I said I was done with Minecraft videos for a while. Uh, I lied. I didn't mean to, but I did. Um, I needed to make a video explaining some architectural terms. Uh, these are real world architectural terms that you'll be able to uh, bring over into Minecraft so that in the event we're ever playing on a server together and I ask you, you know, hey, you're having me help you build the city, what type of cornice do you want for your building, you will know that I'm talking about this section right through here. This, these stone blocks, these are corbels. Uh, they don't always run around the top here. Uh, usually a corbel is just along the tops of windows. But still in all, we'll get to the more specifics of terms like that and discuss different roof types, um... All, all sorts of good stuff. So, you know, if this video is useful to you, uh, please leave a comment. Maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps me out. Any which way, let's start at the basics. This is the exact sort of building that I would build on a survival server uh, to start a little town. So, the first word we need to know is bay. Uh, this is not, you know, B-E-A before... Or B A E. I don't remember how that acronym works. Oh, Internet, you. Uh, but this isn't that. This is B A Y. And all this means is basically opening in the building. So if I could draw an imaginary line up and another one down, it would divide this into three sections, which means that the north face of this building, the one facing us, is a three bay building. We have one bay here for the doors, another bay for this window, and another bay for this window. And that'll be true of any sort of building. So this is a two bay building, this is an additional three bay building, and this is an additional two bay building. Um, those have no bays on them. There's no openings on those walls. Um, so if we come across here, this, as far as the ground floor is concerned, has no bays. Uh, down here, we have a bay. What is the importance of denoting where a bay is? In Minecraft, not that much. But in real life, knowing where a bay is is important because it lets you know where your header beam inside the building is, meaning, hey, if I wanted to, uh, you know, punch down in through here and then put in some stairs and doors into the basement, I could do that. Um, and I would have all the necessary structural support to not collapse the house in on me. Speaking of basement, we don't have the option for sloped metal doors that recede down into the cellar, but if we did, the proper term for that is a bulkhead. Um, on the note of entries in and out, we have this. This is not a porch. This is a stoop. What makes this a stoop? The fact that it doesn't have a roof. If it had a roof, this would be a porch. If it had a porch that covered the entire front half of the house, that is a plantation porch. And if the porch went all the way around the house, that is what they call, uninspiredly, a wraparound porch. Um, so this right here, these decorative stones that I mentioned, uh, before, if that was in this take of the video, who knows, can't be bothered. Uh, these decorative stones are what you would call a corbel. Uh, you'll see these in real world houses, usually just on top of the windows. Um, but a corbel is usually at the bottom of a cornice. Uh, and my cornice, in this case, is just the decorative log blocks that sort of denote the transition between main body, or sorry, main uh, building and roof. Um, over here, for example, we have a much more decorative cornice because this is a different style of roof. Um, this is your basic roof. This is known as a gabled roof. A gable is the proper name for this flat face that is on, you know, at least two sides of the roof. Um, the gable doesn't necessarily care whether or not you have a window in it. It's still very much a gable. 
So that without the window is a gable, and this with the window is still a gable. Oh, speaking of windows, this window here that juts out, this is known as a bay window. The appropriate time to bring that up would have been when I was discussing bays, but I'm an idiot and none of this is scripted. So, fun stuff for me. These little windows here that sort of poke out of the rest of the roof, these are known as dormers. Um, you have a few different styles of dormers. This is a gabled dormer. If the uh, roof went in a slope like that, it would be a shed dormer. And if I had a more elliptical shape instead of a like 45 degree slope on my roof, it would be a eyelid dormer. Um, and those are your most common styles of dormers. Uh, speaking of elliptical shape, this is the next thing. This is not a gabled roof. This is a gambrel roof. I miswrote that sign. So, gambrel roof. I'm pretty sure. It's been a long time since I've done any sort of architectural study, but pretty sure that's what we're after. If you live in the American, you know, Midwest or Northeast, you'll recognize this as a pioneer barn where the slope, that's the angle of the roof, goes up at one angle to about the midway point and then goes at about half of its previous angle to the uh, peak. So if you recognize that as you know, the roof from a barn in your neighborhood or something that you've seen like while traveling, that's, that's because it has some really nice real world advantages. This is what's known as a hip roof. I have no clue why it's called that, but I do know that the hip refers to the shorter side of the slope. So if this roof were to continue on that way for, it could be five blocks, another 30 blocks, it doesn't really matter. The hip, by default, is the shorter half, the half that would, on any other design, be either a gable or a uh, gambrel. So, hip roof. Um, this little bit of roof here that just sort of juts out from an existing wall, this is what they call a pent roof. And I'm glad I wrote signs because I wouldn't have remembered that. A pent roof is an unsupported, just little overhang of a roof. Um, if this pent roof were to extend a little further and be supported in some way, wasn't prepared to do this on the fly. Eh, come on. And be supported in some way. There we go. Tap, tap, tap. This is now what you would call a shed roof. You'll notice here on the sign this says that this is facade, sorry, facade with Flemish gable. The facade is this whole brick thing that we see here. The facade means that the building is designed to appear... <clears throat> mm, I am dying. The building is designed to appear more tall than it really is. So if we come around back, you can see where the real roof lines are. The fact that this is still just a single-story building with some attic space. But when you're looking at the facade, it looks like a two-story building. Uh, the Flemish gable is this little bit of decorative, ornate nonsense here. Um, had this uh, Flemish gable uh, stepped down in some ways, like this, this would be what they would call a crow step gable, with or without the uh, Flemish uh, work at the top. The uh, sloping portions are known as a crow step gable. Um, so, another gable roof example. 
This is a uh, another example of a slope roof or a shed roof, depending on uh, exactly where you studied architecture. And this is the last roof that we're really going to talk about. This is a mansard roof, which you can denote by the fact that it angles back in uh, with a decorative uh, cornice and has trimming going up the angles and along the top of the ridge. The ridge, if I didn't give that term out, is the topmost portion of any roof. So all of this section here that I'm walking. So that is all ridge, and this is ridge as well. You will have multiple ridges on most roofs. So if this uh, main body of the building... If the slope extended higher, the ridge would be up there for the main roof, and then each individual dormer would have its own little ridge. Uh, descending from the ridge is your slope, and any section of roof that hangs out over the main body of the building are known as eaves. Um, a roof accent feature that you'll probably be using a lot come 1.14 is a belfry. They gave us a bell, so it makes sense that you're going to start using that. Some people will call this a bell tower, but it is, technically speaking, a belfry. Um, and why? I'll tell you. The difference is that tower has its own special requirements. Shouldn't shake the camera so much. So this little structure and this structure share the same shape, the same width, the same design, the same uh, spacing between the windows, basically everything. Um, but that is considered a turret and that is considered a tower. And the reason is the tower must be either a standalone building or taller than the rest of the building. A belfry has no such requirement. Um, if this roof were to continue, then um, it could easily go on to be taller than the belfry. Or there could be an additional uh, part of the building sticking up that would be taller than the belfry. These over here, um, these little support structures, these are known as buttresses. Uh, they are not super common in Western architecture. Um, well, American architecture, I should say, unless you're talking about like old school fortresses and things like that. But they are very common in um, historic um, European architecture, uh, castles, cathedrals, etc. And they can either be open, such as these, or completely sealed, and all they do is provide a little bit of uh, support because the walls uh, are going to, by design, try to push themselves out in real life. Um, and this is just something that is designed to prevent and alleviate that. Um, planter boxes, uh, I think everybody is familiar with those. Um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's got it. I think that's all the terms that I typically have uh, mix-ups with people on and wanted to put out there in proper vernacular. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Sorry that this has been completely educational and not super entertaining. But again, I thank you for your time. This has been Nerdy Corgi. If you like the video, consider subscribing.